Good evening, everybody. We are going to get started. We're going to call to order the Zone 7 meeting here of June 18th. If we could begin with a roll call, please. Director uh, Leopold. Here. Coonerty. Here. Caput. Here. McPherson. Here. Lynn. Bilicic. Here. DeHart. Gonzalez. Ponce. Siri. Chair Friend. Here, and we do have a quorum. Are there any changes to today's agenda, Mr. Machado? No changes. All right. So we'll begin with oral communications. This is an opportunity for members of the community to address us on items within the purview of Zone 7, but not on today's agenda. Would anybody like to address us today from the community? Good evening, Mayor Hurst. Well, thank you very much. And I just want to say welcome to Watsonville and thank you for meeting here today. Uh, I'm not going to ask about the traffic report or uh, what the temperature was in Santa Cruz or how the drive was or anything like that. I'm just here to say a simple thank you for meeting here today and, and, and bringing, uh, always bringing resources and, uh, and solutions to many of our uh, South County problems. It's budget session, and uh, I know that uh, you'll be studying up on all your options and all your choices. So I just say uh, good work, uh, thanks a bunch, and uh, don't forget your friends down here. And also, hey, the, you know, the price of strawberries is down a little bit, so you can buy twice as many now for the same amount of money. So don't forget to get your strawberries. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Hurst. I can see the connection to Zone 7 perfectly with that. <laughs> Is there anybody else that would like to address us during oral communications? Okay, see, then we'll bring it back to the board and start taking some actions. The first item is the approval of Zone 7 board meeting minutes. Are there any changes to the minutes? I move to approve if, unless the, uh, somebody wants to comment. We have a motion from Caput. Second. A second from Leopold. Anybody from the committee would like to address us on the minutes? I do have one correction to make. Please. Um, on item seven, um, Adopted item number one should read adopted resolution number one dash 2018 Z seven confirming the previously established zone seven benefit assessment rates for the fiscal year 2018 2019 I believe the by the CPI should be stricken. Thank you. So there's a minor change. Does the maker of the motion would like to move it as amended? Yes. The seconder? Yes. Yes. Okay. Anybody from the community uh, like to address us on the amended minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. We'll now move on to item three, which is the Board of Directors of Zone 7. We have a public hearing on Zone 7 assessment rates for the 18-19 fiscal year to hear objections and protests, if any, and consider adoption of resolution confirming the rate report as outlined in the memo of the district engineer, Mr. Stradley. Thank you, Chair. Um, on March 20th, 2018, um, your board adopted a resolution confirming the previously approved increases in assessment rates for Zone 7 for fiscal year 2018-2019. Further, the board today set today as the public hearing date for the 2018-2019 assessment rate report for Zone 7. So in order to complete the 2018-19 assessment rate proceedings, our staff is recommending the board to open the public hearing and hear objections and protests, if any, to the proposed fiscal year 2018-19 assessment rate report for Zone 7. And upon closing the hearing, uh, conclude the hearing and consider adoption of the resolution confirming the written report on the assessment, ra assessment rates for 2018-2019 fiscal year. Thank you. And welcome, Ms. DeHart. Uh, are there any comments or questions from board members on this item before we open up the public hearing? No, I'd just like to welcome Rhea DeHart, who just came in. Perfect. She's here. Thank Is there you, any, Rhea. Anybody else like to address this? Uh, are any other board members have any questions or comments on this item?
some specific changes um, in the recommended uh, items compared to the uh, approved budget from last year. Um, we, have, we are proposing to increase our uh, maintenance and operations uh, allowance from $500 to $860,000. This increase is to allow for a contractor to perform vegetation maintenance in the Pajaro River, which hasn't happened for quite some time. It's something that needs to be done, and it's um, being brought up under a separate item, uh, item eight in this uh, agenda. Um, we are proposing to decrease the general engineering and public service line item to align with staff uh, time for engineering services in the district. We're proposing to increase the permitting and monitoring requirements to $468,981 because we expect to embark on a comprehensive stream maintenance program and permitting program, which will be of considerable effort. Um, our Army Corps Flood Control Projects Prop 1E line item has decreased to $1,652,570, which reflects our Prop 1E balance. We are proposing to increase our contribution to the Army Corps this year up by $600,000. Um, this, we feel, will position us uh, in a positive way to bring the project into the design phase as we near the completion of the feasibility phase of the, of the project. We have zeroed out our Salsa Poides Creek levee restoration project because that project is now complete. We are also proposing to uh, provide $200,000 to levy pump station upgrades um, that protect the city of Watsonville. This also pertains to um, another item in today's agenda uh, where we're proposing to apply for a grant. Um, we're also proposing $300,000 to put towards Shell Road pumps reconstruction and evaluation of that facility. And we are also proposing $265,000 as an operating transfer out for equipment purchases to be used specifically for the maintenance of levees in Zone 7, as well as a vehicle for staff so that we can more adequately perform our field work and patrol, especially during times of inclement weather when we're out monitoring. So our recommendation at, the, at this point is to approve the proposed budget for Zone 7 Flood Control Water Conservation District for fiscal year 2018-2019. Thank you, Mr. Strelley. Are there questions on the budget? Uh, Ms. Bilicic. Um, I just wanted to, uh, to go over a little bit the uh, Army Corps, the flood control projects, how we dropped a million dollars. And you said because we are what? So <clears throat> we are proposing to increase or be positioned to increase contributions to the Army Corps to enable us to move into the design phase. We but that's out of our budget. Correct. Right. We're adding a million dollars out of our budget. So it was the proposed contribution to the Army Corps last year was 400000 That would be for feasibility. We are expected to complete the feasibility phase in January. And so we'll need to be in a position to provide the local match responsibility for design. And that's what this line item is proposing. And the $2 million, two million six that they used last year, what was that for? So that was not used and completely that reflects our evolving Prop 1E grant balance. So all the contributions that we make to the core for both the feasibility phase and the design phase are reimbursable through our state Prop 1E grant. So we are proposing to be in a position to have a capability to provide a million dollars to the core, which would be matched by federal money whatever contributions we make are reimbursed under Prop 1E. And so we still have $1.6 million in our Prop 1E balance, so that would be reimbursed to us from the state. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Caput. Uh, thank you. You answered uh, one of the questions I had. <clears throat> and then maybe the, the other question I have is, uh, some of this is just one-time money but other the other stuff will come up on uh, maintenance uh, in a different item and that's more than just that's a more than one year it's probably well anyway i'll wait to ask that when it comes up so you're speaking to the increase in the maintenance operations on the levy system so that would be that increase reflects a proposal for a one-time procurement of a contractor to do maintenance work 
in the levee system above and beyond the capabilities that our drainage crews are capable in providing themselves. Okay, and that maintenance would be, uh, kind of describe it quickly, uh, how, what would they actually do? Thinning and reducing vegetation within the channel to provide flood flow conveyance. For flood uh, flow. Okay. Right. Thank you. Any other questions from directors before we open it up to the community? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll open it up for the community. It's your opportunity to address us on the proposed 1819 Zone 7 budget. Good, good evening, welcome. Good evening, my name is Nick Belayich. Uh, thank you, Zone 7 members, for being here. We appreciate it to have it in South County because this is an important issue in South County. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel really old because the Shell Road issue that predates all of you. And I was writing letters about that, I think at least 10, 12 years ago to Zone 7. And none of you were on the Zone 7 board at that time. So I'm getting old on this one for Shell Road. I haven't been here for a while uh, to speak on Zone 7. But Zone 7 was formed in something like 1991. One of the original projects in there was Shell Road reconstruction of the pumps and everything like that. Then when Zone 7A was created after the Areola lawsuit, it had in there funding would go from Zone 7A for the Shell Road project. I honestly don't know what has been done in Shell Road. So I'm curious, have, have we received new pumps there? Has there been any new construction that has gone on there? I keep hearing this is an aging system, an aging system, aging system, and you have almost 30 years from the formation of Zone 7, and it, yeah, it, it was aging 1991. I mean, what's it now? It should have a Social Security stipend here now for it from, from your budget. So I, I would like to find out what is the status with that project? Why do we even need to be spending $300,000? I see part of the budget to evaluate a design for it. Haven't we done that for the last 30 years? Haven't, don't we have a design for that project? I mean, this is bizarre. And I remember in the past, it was probably like 10 years ago or so when I wrote a letter regarding it, I brought up the issue about Zone 7, and then the very next year there was zero money for Shell Road in it. So when I brought it up before Zone 7, I thought, well, that's strange, is it just we don't want to focus on Shell Road? But lo and behold, here it is again. And it, it just, it's very strange to see 300000 allocated for it that is, doesn't seem to have anything to do with construction or repair strictly with design. Maybe we just need to have a Zone 7 meeting that's devoted to Shell Road to give us an idea on what it's going to take to, to actually reconstruct it. There must be a dollar estimate in there someplace, how much time it would take, and why do we have to wait 30 years for it to happen? That's a long time, so I would appreciate that. And I understand it's, I, it's my understanding it's only in, in Supervisor's Friends District, and it predates you by many, many, many years. <laughs> I'm not, not picking on anybody here, uh, but it's uh, uh, something that should, should be addressed, and there's no reason on why we can't have this discussed publicly. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Anybody else like to address us on the budget? Okay, seeing none, we'll bring it back to the board uh, for action. I think it is a reasonable request on a future Zone 7 meeting to have that issue addressed. It's something that the board has actually discussed uh, pretty extensively. We've applied for grants for it, talked about raising the road, and done a number of other th issues associated with it. Um, engineering solutions have actually changed over time about what would be done that was best. There's obviously a number of resource agencies that are involved in this. That's an understatement right there, uh, but it touches a lot of different resource agencies, and we've received different opinions on what would be the best way to address it. Um, Funding also, just to be very brief about it, does uh, flow better toward disadvantaged areas and life safety issues of which neither one of those specifically in that section of the of the Zone 7 apply. Uh, so we've had a lot of challenges with it, but I do think it's reasonable to receive an update uh, uh, at a future meeting, and so we'll make sure that that gets agendized. Thank you for those comments. Is there a motion on the budget? Or I'll make a motion to approve the budget. We have, we have a motion from Bilicic, a second from Leopold. And a comment from Director Caput. We need to uh, make a motion to put it on the agenda of the question that was asked. Uh, we'll just consider that additional direction. You got it. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. We'll move on to item five, which is the Board of Directors of Zone 7 to accept and file a status report on the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers storm damage repairs as recommended by the District Engineer, Mr. Strudley. 
I know we have been all waiting quite some time for the Army Corps to embark on their storm damage repairs to the Pajaro River and Salsapuedes Creek, and I am happy to report that their contractor is out on site mobilizing and setting up their BMPs. They expect to begin working on two of the 17 repair site projects um, next week and the following week, and we'll move through the Pajaro River system first and continue on to repair sites on Salsa Puedes Creek. Um, all these repairs are under the PL 8499 public assistance program, which is fully cost covered by the Army Corps of Engineers. There are no costs to Zone 7. Um, we continue to have weekly on-site meetings with the Army Corps and their contractor to keep track of project status and to make sure that our requests in terms of uh, encroachments and other items are adhered to and all notification and outreach is performed in a satisfactory manner to local landowners that is the responsibility of the Corps and the contractor but we are keeping a close watch on that to make sure that they perform that adequately um, our recommended action is to accept and file this status report on the United States Army Corps of Engineers storm damage repairs other questions director Belisich well it's not a question it's comment is that appropriate now? Yeah, please, thank you. Okay. I, um, I just want to say that I greatly appreciate the efforts of, of you and, and the team to meet weekly with this Army Corps because we have been over and over and over with this with the Army Corps for years. And to finally have something happening is great. Even though they're still a year late, they're at least here. Um, and we're very, very lucky on the South Suedes Creek and the Powell River, we did not have heavy rains last year or we would have had a real problem. There's no doubt about it. Um, but at least they're here now and hopefully they'll finish all 17 of these repairs before winter. So thank you for your persistence. Um, and that's all I have to say. I'm ready to make a motion when it's time. Thank you, Mr. Caput. Uh, um, I wanna thank you also and I think uh, uh, I asked you about uh, two weeks ago uh, how often uh, Congressman uh, Panetta is calling him. I thought he was calling him every two weeks, and you gave me an, a, a different answer. The Congressman's office has weekly phone calls with the Corps, typically ahead of our management calls with the Corps. I think that's great news, and I want to thank... Uh, uh, Council Member Bilicic also has been pushing for that and getting more interest. Uh, uh, and can you quickly just explain uh, just maybe one or two of the sites, maybe the most significant ones, and how, how it will maybe increase some of the water flow in a big storm and uh, whether or not we are uh, what, what are we removing, small branches, and uh, are we removing bigger branches if they're blocking the flow, and uh, are we touching the banks? So the Army Corps is not removing any vegetation specifically. They're repair, repairing damage to the levees and the levee prism. One of the more significant repairs that they will be performing is immediately downstream of the city of Watsonville after they accomplished two very small repair projects on the upper Pajaro River, they're gonna be moving downstream. I don't know exactly which project they're gonna hit next, but it will likely be that one. It's a large repair project where there's significant damage to uh, the levee side from erosion. Um, there are also a number of very important sites to repair up on Salsa Puedes Creek. Many of those sites are um, protected by uh, emergency placement of rock as well as visqueen plastic sheeting. Those will be removed and the levees will be recontoured and repaired. The vegetation work that we're proposing to do is under a different item in the agenda and, and I'm happy to answer questions when that agenda item is brought up. Okay, I'll wait till number eight. I guess uh, I, I want to get into just a little bit of uh, how it really impacts uh, the Lakin community at Houlihan and uh, College Road. Uh, whether or not that's going to help them where the Cordelitas runs into the South Sepoides. We'll open up for the community. Is there anybody like to address us on item five regarding the USA storm damage repair update? 
Okay, we're going back to the board for action. Director Bilicich. Make a motion to approve. I'll second. We have a motion from Director Bilicich, a second from Director Caput. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Move on to item six. As the Board of Directors of Zone 7 to authorize the Chair to sign a letter on behalf of Zone 7 supporting completion of the feasibility phase within budget and on schedule. An accept and file status report on the Pajaro Flood Risk Reduction Project is recommended by the District Engineer. Mr. Strudley. Thank you, Chair. At the last board meeting, March 20th, I had reported to you that the Army Corps was planning on completing their feasibility phase of the Pajaro River Flood Risk Reduction Project, or commonly known as the Levy Project, with a signed director's report in July of 2018. Uh, it may come as no surprise to you that that schedule has slightly shifted. We're now expecting a completed director's report from the Corps January 2019. The reason this occurred is because there were revisions to the director's report that were viewed as not policy compliant, according to the Army Corps. And despite the district's interest, the San Francisco district's interest in pushing those changes into the design phase, which we expected to be in after July of 2018, they were told they couldn't do that and they had to revise the report before it could be signed and completed. That is requiring extra time for Army Corps staff to complete those changes and it's also required them to ask for additional funds through the fiscal year 18 federal work plan. They have done that and they have successfully uh, been awarded those funds. It's a 50% match responsibility for the local sponsors. And so that 50% match equates to $50,000 from Zone 7, $50,000 from Monterey County Water Resources. We have already, uh, through our approved budget, we're already in a position to contribute those funds and have already done so through an electronic funds transfer. So at this point in time, the Army Corps is awaiting their marching orders from headquarters uh, for their scope to complete their feasibility report. Important to this process is that we do, in fact, get a signed, completed director's report by January 2019 because that positions us to be in conversations with them in their budgetary process to get into the design phase. We also want them to adhere to that $200,000 total cost amount because if they do find that they require more money to complete this, they will have to go back again and request additional work plan funds. And problematically, that will require a second, what's called a three by three by three smart planning exemption waiver. All of these are procedures that are onerous and time consuming. So we want them to adhere to that schedule. So to that end, we are um, requesting uh, authority for the chair to sign a letter on behalf of zone seven describing the importance of adhering to project schedule and costs so the feasibility phase can be completed. And we are recommending to accept you to accept and file the status report on the Pajaro Flood Risk Reduction Project. Questions? Director Bilicic. The delay from July to January, what does that actually mean to the people? What does that mean to any type of repairs or anything like that? It doesn't affect the repairs. Okay. The repairs are completely independent, and we hope those repairs to be completed, hopefully before the rainy season starts. Their contracting schedule for those repairs go much longer than that, but it is both the cores and the contractors the goal to have those repairs done before sometime in October. In terms of the, uh, the effect of this delay in the long-term recon levy reconstruction project, it really would have it doesn't affect us too much because we most likely would have had to wait till February 2019 to enter into those discussions with the core for them to de demonstrate a capability to get us into the design phase. But that's why it's important that they stick to this schedule and get the director's report done in January so that we can be in that position to have discussions with them on design. We can't ask for the core to demonstrate a capability to go into design without a signed director's report. And that's why it's so important for them to have that report done in January. So if they had done it in July, we'd have been way ahead of the game. If they don't finish in January, we'll, behind the game. we'll be behind if they don't, because February is when they start looking at it, right? 
we will only be behind if they do not complete that report in right. January. If they, if do they not repeat, complete it. if they complete that report after they're in a position to ask for work plan funds, then they can't ask for funds for Pajaro. And how do we monitor that they they do complete it by January? How do we? We, we have ongoing biweekly calls with the project level team at the core, and then on alternating weeks, we have management level calls with the vertical team at the core. And this is an ongoing process that we've been involved with for, for quite some time. So those conversations are going to continue to proceed through the rest of this design phase and through the completion of that report by January. I hope you're successful. I think you will be. I mean, you keep the meetings going, and, and but you know, July, and just to say, oh, well, January, this is just six months. And in January, they could say, oh, well, wait till June. It's just six months, and we need to keep going. So it's really um, imperative that you continue your conversations and that we do finish. July's got to be the end, the drop dead for us. Wholeheartedly agree. Thank you. <coughs> Director Caput. Um, I want to thank you, uh, for you know stepping in you've been on the job now about what a year and a half a year yeah, yeah. and i want to thank the new public works uh, director for uh, being on top of this uh, i i do want to say i hope i don't see any more changes uh, in the public works department uh, we've seen a lot of people that have been working on this project and i don't want to see it uh, get confused and i i, I want to i want you guys to be uh, you know, free to look at it and make sure we got everything done. Uh, one question on the BCR: uh, We have the uh, we have the Lakin community, and then we have the river and the South Sapotes Creek. They're all combined into one BCR. One part of the uh, project is rated high at 3.0 or three a little above, and one is uh, at 1.0 or below. The magic number is what 2.5. Well. We have to be above unity um, for the core's benefit cost ratio to get through their hurdles, but we effectively have to have a much higher benefit cost ratio on the order of two or above to even be competitive, remotely competitive when it comes time to OMB to make their budgetary decisions and allocations. But the two are combined, uh, you take the 3.0 and the uh, 0.1, or 1.0, and when you combine them, they're, they're given equal weight, or is there a percentage? So they look at different, what are called hydraulically and economically separable elements to the project, and those are different regions, kind of what, like what, what you were just describing. Each of those regions needs to be economically justified through the benefit-cost ratio analysis, and all of the sections that are included in the plan form of the existing tentatively selected plan include elements that are economically justified. And then uh, the other question is, uh, we're in competition with uh, how many statewide that are trying to get flood protection work done? I'm assuming that there's a, are we in the final four? <laughs> there are a wide variety of projects across the state as well as the country that are in competition essentially for attention and funding. But are um, they going to be getting a report in January, of, or are they all no. have been told no already? The reporting schedule and project schedules for every project is different. So we will not have a report coming out in January that will be able to be compared in sequence with the release of other reports. But this is, a, this is farther than we've ever been before. That is correct. And then I, I just want to ask, uh, I don't mean to put you on the spot, Rhea, but you live in that community that we're talking about trying to protect. How important is it to you that we get something done here?
we will come to public comment soon, but we will encourage you to come up. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Thank you, Mr. Caput. And, and the item before us is in regards to a letter. Would anybody in the community like to address us on this item? You're welcome to come up if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> the letter is just to encourage that they maintain on a budget and schedule associated with it. Uh, my name is Ari Parker, and I live in District 7 here in Watts, uh, Watsonville. And I have lived there for 30 years. Uh, my parents live there as well. And what Rhea was talking about is I encourage it, yes, whatever we can do, because I mentioned at our city council meeting the other night, there were dark days here in Watsonville. You were ready to sandbag in the middle of the day. You were ready to sandbag in the middle of the night. And we have a, a really um, vulnerable community uh, in District 7. People are on oxygen. They're in their 70s, 80s. Rhea, you won't mind if I say it. She's 95, will be 96 in October. She's six months older than my mom, who is still living there. And, um, and they have been waiting since they were pretty much my age uh, for something to be done. And so, yes, I encourage this body to, to continue to do as much as possible. And to um, we talked about Proposition 68 funds at our city council for city funds. I don't know if they're applicable to county as well. But I'd like to encourage you and say uh, every day that it rains, we smile a little bit, but everybody walks around worried. And when it rains for a week or two, we get more worried. And if it rains three weeks in a row, when we should be in embracing that because we live in an agricultural committee, we come to resent the rain and we get you know, people don't sleep, things happen. So we, we, when she says we're the flood people, we do. That's what the, the people here in Watsonville, especially in District 7, feel like. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Mayor Hurst. I would also uh, strongly encourage you, uh, Lowell Hurst, City of Watsonville, to sign the letter. And let's make it a good, strong letter, okay? None of this pussyfooting around with uh, nice talk. It's time to uh, fish and cut bait. It's time to get busy with uh, all the repairs. And we need to encourage these folks that we're impatient and that the rate payers, as well as those most affected by the threat of flooding, that they get taken care of and get some reassurance. We've waited a long, long time. Let's help move them forward if we can. Thank you. Thank you. We'll bring it back to the board for action on this item, item six. I'll make a motion to approve the letter. We have a motion from Director Bilicic. I actually had a second from Director Caput already. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Move on to item seven. The board of directors is zone seven to adopt a resolution authorizing the district staff to apply for grant funding under the FEMA hazard mitigation grant program to enhance the performance, functionality, and safety features of flood water evacuation pumps within zone seven. Uh, Mr. Strudley. Thank you, Chair. As you know, the runoff that courses through the storm drains in Watsonville has to make its way to the river somehow. And the way it does that is it reaches its uh, path to pumps, and those pumps pump that runoff water from the storm drains in city streets into Salsa Place Creek or into the Pajaro River. Those pumps are old. They lack certain features that would make them more resilient and operate um, at a higher level of performance. And one way to do this is to dedicate a portion of our budget, which I am proposing to do. But even more than that, what I am proposing here is to authorize staff to apply for a FEMA hazard mitigation grant to expand the capabilities of that funding recommendation and achieve even more benefits for our flood control facilities that protect the city of Watsonville. What we would like to do is to write a grant 
um, for approximately a million dollars of in additional infrastructure, automated gate valves, trash rakes, which prevent debris from clogging the pumps, other safety features associated with these levee pumps, and potentially even resizing some of them if the analysis suggests um, that's a feasible option. Um, we have an option with this hazard mitigation grant to cover 75% of those project costs. So for um, this infrastructure request of approximately a million dollars, we would be left to make up approximately $250,000. I'm proposing the, uh, well, the now accepted budget includes a $200,000 line item for pump reconstruction and upgrades. We also have uh, funds available in the zone 7A budget, which is specifically slated for flood control facilities and appurtenances, and we have contingency funding within our Zone 7 budget that could also be used to support this. Um, the grant deadline is September 4th, which is ahead of our next board meeting, September 18th, which is why I'm coming to you now um, requesting that you adopt a resolution to authorize the district staff to apply for this grant under the FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. Um, for these pump station upgrades and enhancements um, for Zone 7 Flood Control District adjacent to the Pajaro River and Salspays Creek. Thank you. Are there any questions from directors on this item? Is there anybody from the community that would like to address this on authorization to apply for the grant program? Good evening and welcome. Thank you. My name is Steve Trujillo. I live in Pajaro Village on Bronte Avenue. There's a pump at 740 Bronte at the back end of it, and I walk by it every day when I take my dog for her walk. Um, I can't even tell you in the last three years how many times it's been vandalized, graffitied. The four pieces of uh, metal that used to hold up the roof over it are leaning about at a 40 degree angle. <laughs> um, I've watched a city employee work to turn the valve on and struggle with it to get it to go on. So I'm an eyewitness as to how badly these pumps need to be either changed or refurbished. It's more than a bit of a challenge for any city employee. Um, and uh, I strongly recommend this needs to be done because they are really in poor shape and are very antiquated. And having uh, survived the uh, winter last year, uh, walking along the Salsi Puedes Creek uh, Trail, I can tell you uh, more than a few nights I spent uh, with one ear to my phone uh, thinking that if a flood comes, I will need to get my dog and my part, my former partner um, out of, in his wheelchair out the front door and to safety. So yeah, this, as Mr. Hart said, this is a big deal and it needs to get done. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else like to address this on this grant item? We'll bring it back to the board for action. So moved. Second. We have a motion from Bilicic and a second from Leopold. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. Move on to item eight as the board of directors of zone seven to approve the RFP for the Pajaro River Vegetation Maintenance Project and authorize staff to begin distribution of the RFP. Direct the clerk of the board to advertise the notice of RFPs for a 10-day period beginning June 23, 2018, set the deadline for submittal of proposals for 2 p.m. on July 12, 2018, in the Department of Public Works and authorize the district engineer to award the contract to the most qualified firm immediately following completion of the proposal review and to the issue the notice to proceed and direct staff to return to the board on September 25, 2018 to report on project status. Mr. Stradley for item eight. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the Para River in Lower Salsa Puedes Creek is in need of vegetation thinning. Um, our 1949 operations and maintenance manual require us to maintain a specific conveyance capacity in the river channel. That conveyance capacity was challenged in our 2017 storm season, and we have recent information from our hydraulics consultants that the uh, vegetation which slows down the conveyance of water through the system does indeed need to be thinned. The capability to perform this maintenance is above and beyond the capabilities that our drainage um, crews possess um, in terms of their uh, manpower as well as their equipment that they possess. And we have specific avoidance and minimization measures that we must employ 
um, for environmental considerations of this work, which also requires a specific um, specialized piece of equipment. So we are requesting um, to advertise an RFP to seek a firm capable in performing this work and using specialized equipment um, that allows for the least amount of disturbance to the surrounding slopes and vegetation, as well as the habitat restoration that occurred as part of the bench excavation project. Um, we also want this firm to adhere to a strict project schedule so that they can complete this work this summer ahead of any rainy uh, weather that, that approaches this fall. Um, we are recommending the staff approve the RFP for the maintenance project, authorize staff to begin distribution of the RFP, direct the clerk of the board to advertise the RFP for a 10-day period beginning June 23rd, Set the deadline for submitting proposals by 2 p.m. on July 12th, 2018 in the DPW conference room. Authorize district engineer to award the contract to the most qualified firm immediately following completion of the proposal review because of this timing constraint for the work window this summer. And direct staff to return to your board in the September meeting to report on project status. Thank you. Are there any questions on this? Director Caput? Well, you answered some of them earlier, so I won't repeat those. But uh, we're, we're uh, with the vegetation, are we talking about the middle of the channel or are we talking about only the sides of the channel? We're talking about removing vegetation from the upper and lower banks. We are required to maintain a riparian corridor in the middle of the channel. But uh, past experience has shown that we can maintain our conveyance standards in the channel as w at the same time as leaving habitat elements like the riparian tree corridor in the center of the channel. So we're not proposing to cut down all the trees, but we're proposing to uh, thin the vegetation on the upper and lower banks as well as the bench lands if there are trees on the benches. And uh, in certain uh, areas, or, uh we're increasing water flow, approximately ballpark figure on how many gallons per second maybe we're able to keep uh, water flowing through rather than backing up. So on the Pajaro River above the confluence with Salsapoyas Creek, our O&M manual uh, requires us to maintain a system that conveys 19,000 cubic feet per second. Below the confluence, that requirement goes up to 22,000 cubic feet per second. So we want to trim the vegetation to support those maintenance requirements in our O&M manual. Okay. And uh, this is a little bit not, well, it's related, but uh, Thompson Road and Coward, the work, uh, we, the work we did there where it looked like there was going to be a, br a break in the, uh, uh, in the levee of the Pajaro River. That's complete and that's holding up well. The Road uh, and Coward uh, where it looked like it was going to break in the 2017 storm. Oh, you're referring to the seepage berm. Yes, we're maintaining the seepage berm in place. There is no additional threat that the levee is going to break in a subsequent storm. Um, the repairs that are going to be performed by the Army Corps are aimed at remedying all the erosion to the levee system and that potential for it to break. Um, that being said, we will continue as we always do to vigil vigilantly monitor uh, storms as well as the condition of the levee and water levels in any given storm. And if we have to resort to emergency protective measures like we did in 2017 again, we will do that. Good. I want to thank the board for a meeting and saying go ahead and do it. Uh, uh, it wasn't a scheduled meeting, but you guys were already ready to roll and uh, the Board of Supervisors voted uh, to go ahead and just, you know, get that done right away. So thank you very much. Thank you. Director Bilicic. You said you're going to take care of um, vegetation on the banks. And what about some of these trees in the middle? Yeah, those two. They'll, they'll be gone? Because yeah, so I, so I should be clear when I say banks. When I mean banks, I don't mean the inside of the levee slope or something that you might consider to be on the outside of the channel. Mm -hmm. The lower and upper bank regions are actually lower down in the channel. So they, we are proposing to have our contractor keep 
a narrow strip of riparian vegetation in the middle, but there will be trees removed to the side of that. But that's down in the in the lower portions of the channel. Now that's that's good because you hear people talking about that all the time. Can we get some of these trees out of the channel? Can we move these trees? So I think that will help tremendously. Thank you. Welcome. Now open it up to the community. Is there anybody who'd like to address us on the Vegetation Maintenance Project RFP? All right, seeing none, we'll bring back to the board for action. So moved. Second. A motion from Director Bilicic and a second from Director uh, Leopold. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Move on to item nine, which is the Board of Directors of Zone 7 to approve an amendment to the agreement. Uh, 18D3763 with Gutierrez Consultants and the not to exceed amount of $30,000 per fiscal year and extending the contract through June 30th, 2019 and take related actions as recommended by District Engineer, Mr. Stredley. Thank you, Chair. In 2013, the board approved a Proposition 84 Local Levy Assistance Program grant between the county and the state uh, Department of Water Resources. Um, that grant agreement supported work associated with the bench excavation project, which we all know has been completed. And the only remaining task that is to be completed for that grant award is, is grant project closeout reporting. Um, we have retained uh, Gutierrez consultants for a number of years to assist us in these grant uh, management requirements. And sh um, Lydia Gutierrez has a very long standing history on working with us and grants um, and is specifically um, uh, uniquely positioned to complete this work. It would make no sense to seek someone new to continue these um, close out reporting requirements for a grant that we have had her maintain uh, for Zone 7 for a number of years. Um, we would only need to extend her contract an additional year to provide these close out reporting requirements. And so we are recommending the board approve the amendment to the agreement with Gutierrez consultants in the not exceed amount of $30,000 per fiscal year, extending her contract through June 30th, 2019 to provide these Prop 84 local levy assistance program grant administration services for phase two of the Paha River bench excavation project and to authorize the district engineer to sign the amendment to the agreement on behalf of the district. Any questions on this item? Any member of the community would like to address us on the extension of the uh, consultant contract? Okay, seeing none, we'll bring back to the board for action. I'll move to approve. A second. Again. We have a motion from Director Caput and a second from Director Bilsich. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. We'll now move on to item 10, uh, which is as the Board of Directors of Zone 7 to approve amendment to the agreement with Northwest Hydraulic Consultants, increasing compensation by $50,000 for a new not to exceed total amount of $200,000 and extending the existing contract through June 30th, 2019 and take the related actions. Mr. Stredley. Thank you, Chair. On June 19th, 2017, the Board approved an amendment uh, to agreement with Northwest Hydraulic Consultants to provide general hydrologic and hydraulic consulting services on an as needed basis. Northwest Hydraulics is the consultant who takes our existing data and conducts our capacity analysis to make sure that we are in alignment with those O&M maintenance requirements for conveyance capacity that I stated to you earlier in, in the vegetation RFP board item. Um, they are also in the midst of designing repair plans for a, an isolated site that is um, our own responsibility to repair rather than the core. Um, we will seek reimbursement from FEMA public assistance for those repairs, but we wish to retain and extend um, the contract with Northwest Hydraulic Consultants so that they can complete that design work so that they can take information following our vegetation maintenance and conduct their capacity analysis to confirm that we are indeed in alignment with our 1949 operations and maintenance conveyance requirements. Um, they would also be on call to perform other needed work, such as developing some criteria that would help us in the future um, prioritize repair sites in the Pajaro um, due to erosion of uh, benches adjacent to the levee. So we are recommending that your board approve amendment to agreement 
2892 with Northwest Hydraulic Consultants, Inc., increasing compensation by $50,000 for a not to exceed amount of $200,000 and extending the existing contract through fiscal year 2018-19, expiring on June 30th, 2019, and to authorize the district engineer to sign the amendment to the agreement on behalf of the district. Are there any questions on this item? Uh, Director Caput. Um, maybe while they're doing the inspection, they could look at the, what Shell Road uh, and tell us what uh, has been done or hasn't been done in the last 40 years. We will have to go through a rather comprehensive process to look at what needs to be done to rehabilitate the Shell Road pump station, and we will ultimately have to embark on a competitive procurement process to secure someone to do that because that's actually not under the scope of work that's outlined here. Director Bilicic? I just wanted to say I, I appreciate the fact that they are on call and we'll make sure things are done when needed. I think that's, uh, that's important because we never know when we need them and it's great to have them there. So thank you for putting that in there. Is there anybody from the community that would like to address us on item 10 for this contract? Uh, seeing none, we'll bring back to the board for action. So moved. We have a motion from Director Bilsich, a second from Director Coonerty. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Move on to item 11, which is the, as the Board of Directors of Zone 7 to ratify an emergency contract with Community Tree Service Incorporated and Emergency Purchase Orders with Ecological Concerns Incorporated, Pacific Crest Engineering Incorporated, and Harrow Kucinich and Associates Incorporated for emergency levy inspection and repair work on the Pajaro River levies and take related actions. Mr. Strudley? Thank you, Chair. Uh, at the March 21st, 2017 Zone 7 meeting, um, we reported to the board that we have had hired Pacific Crest Engineering and Haro Kucinich Associates to perform geotechnical work associated with um, the placement of the seepage berm that was mentioned earlier. Um, we also did uh, emergency work later in 2017 um, with Community Tree Service incorporated to remove uh, a large conglomeration of wood and debris from the Pajaro River because it posed a safety hazard for um, future flood flows. And we secured uh, Ecological Concerns Incorporated to develop the biological opinion and other monitoring work associated with that emergency project. Um, their final invoice was submitted in the amount of $4,026.80. Community Trees Service final invoice was $111,080.06, which is actually far below what their uh, initial cost estimate was. Um, all of these costs associated with these emergency contracts um, have been submitted to FEMA for public assistance reimbursement um, associated with those federally declared disasters. Um, attached for your board's review are the independent contractor agreements for these services as well as the emergency purchase orders for Ecological Concerns Incorporated, Pacific Crest Engineering, and Haro Kucinich Associates, uh, as well as the final invoices from each vendor. Staff is recommending that the board ratify emergency contract R1-1414 with Community Tree Service in the amount of $111,080.06 for emergency debris removal on the Paha River authorize the district engineer to sign the original contract with Community Service Inc. on behalf of Zone 7, authorize the district engineer to approve payment of the invoice for emergency debris removal from the Pajaro River, ratify emergency purchase orders R1-1417 with Ecological Concerns Incorporated, R2-6341 with Pacific Crest Engineering Incorporated, and R2-6342 with Haro Kucinich and Associates Incorporated and authorize the district engineer to approve payment in the amounts of $4,026.80 to Ecological Concerns Incorporated, $2,345 to Pacific Crest Engineering Incorporated, and $1,710 to Harrow Kucinich and Associates Incorporated. Any questions on the emergency contract ratifications? Director Bilsich? Just a comment that I appreciate the fact that we went ahead, did the work, got it done, and now we're going to pay them. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome. Anybody from the community like to address this on this item? Okay, we'll bring it back to the board for action. Move so approval. Move. We have a, a motion from uh, Director Leopold and a second from Director Bilicic. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Thank you all. That just finishes the Zone 7 board meeting. We'll now.